Good evening. What's up, guys? Come on in, family. God bless you. God bless every single one of you guys. What's going on? How's it going out there? So good to see you. We pray that you are having an awesome day in Jesus' name. Praise God. Pray that you're having an awesome day in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on in. It is so good to see you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless every single one of you guys. Praise God. Good evening, family. Good evening. Good evening, family. Come on. Come on. We are always family, right? That's what our core belief is, our core value. Good evening, Moretta. It was so good seeing you and your son. Thank you so much for coming and seeing us in person. It was a blessing to see you. Pray all is well with you and your family in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on in, family. We're going to have a great time today. Come on in. Hey, Jaleesa, so good to see you and your family on Sunday. You have a blessed family. You guys are awesome. Christina, God bless you. Praise God. Mrs. Baraona. Baraona. How you doing, Mrs. Baraona? God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Get los, my good brother. God bless you. My walking Bible. Get los, my walking Bible. Praise God. Good to see you, brother. So good to see you. Can't wait to... Uh, you know, start to uh, teach this lesson here. What's up, my man, DJ Ball? Haji, my good brother. God bless every single one of you guys. So good to see you. I pray that you guys are doing well. I pray that your family is doing well. I pray that you're having an awesome week in the name of Jesus. Come on in. <clears throat> We're going to have a wonderful discussion today. Praise God. We're going to keep this going. We are in our Passover season, and so we are walking in our exodus. Praise God. So come on, come on. We're going to keep talking about this exodus. This is really a prophetic uh, message during a prophetic time. Praise God. So God bless you. Come on in. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you in all that you set your hands to do in the name of Jesus. So happy to see you guys. Praise God have an awesome discussion today. Yep, we're going to keep this going. Uh, what we did on Sunday, I tell you, I listened to that message, man, and I tell you, after after meditating on that message, man, it really has you uh, having a, the, the identity that God has for you, you know? When you meditate on that message, it really gives you a different focal point to see yourself as God sees you. And it, it is so important <clears throat> that you see yourself as God sees you. If you don't see yourself as God sees you, you are shortchanging yourself and you are so valuable. Your identity is, uh, is everything. It's what we're missing. Yes, Dana, identity is what we're missing. You agree? We're missing that. The body of Christ, the believer, we're missing the proper identity. And I, man, when I, when I heard the message, I said, wow. That's, that's one for the archives, one to listen to over and over again. It's so important that we have the correct identity. It is so important that we have the identity that Jesus died to give us. And so we're going to continue with this teaching today. We're going to uh, be in that vein. So I'm going to wait for one more minute, and then I'll, I'll get started with a word of prayer. I have two announcements to make. And then after that, we'll have a great time together. How, how about that? How does that sound? God bless you, Ball. God bless every single one of you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Did you guys enjoy that message on Sunday? Did it speak to you? Did you enjoy the message on identity? If you enjoyed it, let me see. Show me. Show me that you enjoyed it. Let's see. Show me by the by the love that you showed. Let's show, let's show some love. If you enjoyed the message on Sunday on identity, why don't you go ahead and start to put some hearts on the screen for the person who gave it to you. And he is Holy Spirit. Praise God. We thank God for Holy Spirit. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it was awesome, right? Praise God. Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Holy Spirit, they love the message. They love the message. <clears throat> I'm going to... 
Good evening, family. I'm going to go into a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Father, we just bless you. We come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the opportunity to, to come together again and eat from your table. There's no distance in you. There's no distance in prayer. We are all connected through you. And Father, may this prayer move heaven right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for your protection, for your provision, for your guidance. We thank you, Father God, as we are about to hear from you. That is you speaking and not me. Father, I decrease that you may increase. Father, make me non-existent. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Father, none of me and all of you, I decrease that you may increase. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. I am just the vessel. Have your way. We welcome also the angels of gather. Protect us during this service. Move supernaturally. Bring your healing touch and do what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless every single one of you guys out there. So happy to see you. <clears throat> We're going to have a great time today in conversation. Hello, family. There's just two announcements that I want to make. Number one, the disciple class, the disciple class, uh, the final class is this Saturday, okay? So our final discipleship class is this Saturday at 10 a.m. Look out for the Zoom link. We're going to get that Zoom link sent out this week before the class um, by text message. Hello, family. God bless you. So our final discipleship class is this Saturday at 10 a.m. via Zoom. By, uh, Bishop Young is going to bless us with the final class for discipleship. Secondly, we're having a wonderful time on Sundays at 9 o'clock with our Let There Be Like segment. Good evening, family. So good to see every single one of you guys. I pray the blessings of God towards every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you experience the love of God through this teaching today, okay? And so don't forget on Sunday, meet us at 9 a.m. at service, okay? We are doing our Let There Be Like segment and people are being healed and delivered from these discussions. So we're going to keep this going. Let there be light at 9 o'clock at the theater. And again, this Saturday at 10 a.m. is our final discipleship class with Bishop Young. All right? Okay. With that being said, would you guys please do me a favor? Would you partner with me? Would every one of you guys here who is on right now, would you press the share button? And also go ahead and tag your family and friends. I tell you, we are experiencing so much deliverance in this ministry. We give God praise for people being healed, people being healed. Hello, hello, family. God bless every one of you guys. We are, we are experiencing just so much healing and deliverance. That we just thank God for it. People are getting what they're looking for. And we are, we are certainly a ministry of deliverance, okay? And so we started a couple of weeks now a new series and it's titled Exodus, okay? And so today is our fourth installment into this teaching. And so today, the teaching is titled Exodus 4.0. And in parentheses, uh, the word is identity. So we started, when we first started, we spoke about living a sacrificial life, okay? So today, well, from Sunday past, we, we transitioned or we shifted from living a sacrificial life to really focusing on identity. And so I'm going to focus on that today as well and then Sunday as well coming up, okay? Because I know that the missing ingredient of our life, the missing ingredient to our success in God is our identity. No if ands, and buts about it, right? So you guys go ahead and press, press the share button now because your family and friends really need to hear this message. It's going to bless their socks off. Okay. The biggest issue in the world is identity. It is, right? And that's the reason why <clears throat> social media has so much power. 
there is a lot of power in social media because a lot of people go to social media looking for their identity. We are, a lot of us on social media, we want as much likes and shares and comments as possible, right? And it's because for a lot of people, when you get the likes, the shares, the comments, for a lot of us, it gives us a sense of purpose, okay? There are some people who live and die for social media. And when they don't get the response they're looking for, that thing can ruin their day, ruin their life, ruin their time. So social, social media is a powerful tool because social media gives a lot of people a sense of purpose. It gives a lot of people a sense of identity. When you, when you look at TV, advertisers always target towards people because they know if they can tap into you, then you'll be, they'll be able to control your, your time, how much you watch on TV, what you listen to, and even what you buy. So they, when they market you, they're marketing because they're trying to get your attention to spend your money. Because they know the longer they have your attention, the more likely you are to spend your money with them on that particular product. So your identity is very important because when you have your identity in place, right? You're not moved by social media. You're not moved by the shares. You're not moved by the likes. You're not moved by the comments. You really don't care, right? When you, when you have your identity in place, they can market all they want to. You're not going to spend money just because, just, you know, because they're marketing and, and, and saying that if you have this or if you have that, you're somebody. See, when God made you, God made you with his identity. So you don't need a thing to define you. You are already defined. Here is your definition. You are a child of God. And that's, that's, that is a high identity status. That's a high name to have, a child of God, right? Because being a child of God is not just something you say, okay? Being a child of God simply means you can move like God. You can act like God. You can respond like God. The problem with the church and the problem with the world is we don't have a true identity. So when most, when people don't have a true identity, what we do is we let things and people give us our value, give us our worth, and define who we are. The problem with that is we live in a world where people would like to dog people out and, and hurt people's feelings and, and, and say things and and do things to really bring you down. When a person is not strong or solid in their identity, more than likely what they do is they bring other people down to raise them, themselves up, okay? So it's very important that you know who you are and whose you are, all right? I say that again. It is very important for you to know who you are and whose you are. Because once you know whose you are, then you know who you are. You would never know who you are if you don't know whose you are, okay? So, you belong to God. You are the child of the living God, okay? I, I want you just to let that soak in, all right? When you tap into whose you are, then you find true value in who you are. But if you don't recognize yourself as a son or daughter of God, if you don't see yourself, you're not just a person. You're not just a woman. You're not just a man. You are the child of the living God. You are the, you are the offspring of God himself. You came from God. You came out of God. And in and, and, and all reality, you are God in the earth. Praise God. You are, you are God. You are, you are the example of God in the earth. No one else is. Not animals, not trees, not plants, not flowers. Nothing else in the earth has the title as, as the image of God as you and I have. We have the image of God every step of the way. Everything we do, everything we do, we, we are just like him. We're not made lower than him. 
We're not made different than him. We are in the God class. We, we are in the, in the God class. And I'm going to prove this to you. I'm going to prove this to you. I'm going to prove this to you. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. Now, let me tell you what my assignment is today. Today, my assignment is to let you see yourself as through the lenses of God himself. This is my assignment, okay? I am, I am moved today to give you an image. So let me just say this. Father, our heart is prepared to hear from you. So Lord, deposit such an image inside of us that after this, we would not see ourselves ever again unlike the way you see us. Meditate. Help our hearts to meditate on the reality of who we are in you. And we give you praise for this right now in Jesus' name. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 6, okay? Now look at this. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. This is the powerful thing I want you to see. That God did not cause it to rain for one reason. Because a man was not in the earth to till the ground. Let me show you your importance, all right? Rain did not come on the earth because a human, a male or female, was not in the earth to take care of the ground. Don't tell me you're not important. You are so important that God did not make it rain because the man was not in the earth to till the ground. How awesome is that? That God waited for, for a man to come in order for rain to come. Because when man came, man took care of the ground. If, if, if a man did not come, the ground was not going to be taken care of. How strong is that? That God waited for us to come in order for him to move and bring rain into the earth. Come on. Look how strong that is. Come on, talk to me. Look at your identity. Your identity is so awesome that God did not God did not create rain as you and I know it because we were not here. That's how strong you are. God considered you and because he considered you and because you were not here, we did not have rain. You are the reason why there was no rain. If you was here, if I was here at the time, rain would have came. But because man was not here, God considered man. And when God considered man, he stopped the rain. Now, let me show you this. Okay. He stopped the rain. All right. Now, so you have power over the rain because God waited for you to come to bring rain. So as a human, you have power over rain. And we see that when Jesus went to the other side, I believe it's Mark chapter 5, I believe. When he went to the other side and the storm came, he stopped the rain. It's, see, you see that? You have authority over rain. You have authority over the environment because God did not allow the environment to be because you and I was not in the earth. You got power over the rain. In other words, any storm that comes your way, you have the power over the storm. I want you to write for me in the comment section, if you don't mind, I got the power. I want you to write for me in the comment section, I got the power. Write for me in the comment section, I got the power, please. I want you to see, it. but not just write it say, it, say it as well. Say it and write it. Say it and write it. Say it right, I got the power. I got the power. I got the power. Come on. Come on. Say it. Say it right. I got the power. 
Come on. Come on. Say, I got the power. I got the power. Write that for me. Praise God. Actually, it was Mark chapter 4 when he stopped the rain. Right? Let me see. Make me make sure. Uh, yep. Mark chapter 4. So in Mark chapter 4, he stopped the rain. He stopped the rain. Listen, I want you to understand this family, okay? You're not just saying words. Please hear me, okay? These are not just words. This is your reality. Your reality is that you have power like God. You are in the God class. You are in the same class as God. I want you to close your eyes for one second, right? I want you to close your eyes for one second, and I want you to say, I am in the God's class. I want you to say that because if you don't get your identity right, you can't go further in life than where you are right now. I want you to say that I am in the God class. Come on. I want you to say I am in the God class because listen, again, if you don't have your identity right, you would never escape abuse. You would never escape toxic people. You would never escape toxic relationships. You would never escape mistreatment. You would never escape failure. You would never escape abandonment. You would never escape torment because your identity controls all of that. Your identity controls everything. When your identity is secure and you see yourself as God sees you, you have God's experience every single time. So your exodus you're leaving that person, you're leaving that relationship, you're leaving the abuse, you're leaving the self-esteem, you're leaving the fear, you're leaving the doubt, you're leaving the, 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 the always, uh, you know, complaining and not making it happen. All of that is contingent upon how you see yourself. If you see yourself from the God class, then you operate at a higher dimension. You don't operate the way normal people do. You go to another level. So again, God did not let the rain come because you won't hear. God did not let the rain come because you were not here. But when you came, the rain came. And when you came, you took care of the ground. You did. You did. You took care of the ground when the rain came. Right, But the rain and the ground was blessed when you showed up. You blessed the rain, you blessed the, you blessed the, 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 uh, the ground, and when you showed up, the rain and the ground came together as one because you was here to take care of it. That's how important you are. That's how much power you are. Family, you are in the God class. There's not another creature not another human, not another person in all existence like you. You are God in the earth. I want to, I want to take that and I want to sow that in you. Because when you see yourself from that perspective, you leave certain things and you leave certain people behind. And when you see yourself from that perspective, certain things and certain people will not attach itself to you. It will not. It will not. The Bible is clear. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Two people walk together because they see the same thing. Two people walk together because they see the same thing. Two people, if you and someone are going in the same direction, if you are in relationship with someone and you guys are going in the same direction, it's because there's an agreement there. Because when you're different, you cannot be in relationship with someone who's not like you. Because they have to level up. They have to come up to your level. Don't ever come down to a level. It's better for you to bring someone up than, than allow someone to bring you down. You are in the God class. God don't come down. God comes up. Remember, when Moses went to see God... Moses had to go on top of the mountain. God didn't come down to Moses. God went up. So you are God in the earth. So when you deal with people, you gotta, you have to have enough in you to bring a person up. When you're dealing with a circumstance or situation, 
have enough in you to bring somebody up. Nobody has the power to bring you down. Not a person. No one or nothing has the power to bring you down. No one or nothing has the power to bring you down. No one or nothing has the power to bring you down. If you came down, it's because you gave permission to come down. Because you can't come down without permission. Why? You are in the God class. You're in the God class. You're not lower than God. You are in the God class. So if you came down, you came down by permission. You came down by, you gave someone the permission to bring you down. But you're better than that. You're better than that. You're better than the abuse. You're better than the, than the mistreatment. You're better than the disrespect. You're better than, than the ill treatment. You're better than settling for less. Don't you ever settle for less because God does not settle. You are in the God class. Let me give you one more scripture. Let me give you one more scripture. Let me give you Genesis chapter 2, verses 19 to 20. Genesis chapter 2, verses 19 to 20. And I'm going to read to you out of the New King James Version. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. Listen to me. Listen to this. God created the animals, but God did not name the animals. God created the animals, and God brought the animals to Adam and let Adam name the animals. Now, whatever the Bible says, that whatever Adam named the animals, that was the name that God said okay to. So Adam Look at a bird and say, you're a bird. And God said, okay, that's a bird. All right? Adam looked at a horse and said, that's a horse. And God said, okay, that's a horse. Adam looked at a pig and said, okay, that's a pig. And God said, okay, that's a pig. Now, what would have happened if Adam would have called a horse a bird and called a bird a horse? That would have been its name. Whatever Adam named God agreed to. God agreed to whatever Adam said. Don't tell me you don't have authority in this earth. Don't tell me you don't have authority over what happens in your life. Don't tell me you don't have authority on what you agree to or what you say no to. You are so powerful that God created and God gave you the opportunity to name. Now, let me tell you why I say you, right? All humans came from Adam. So when Adam named the animals, you and I was inside of Adam. So when Adam named the animals, it was no different than you and I naming the animals. So when Adam named the animals, we named the animals too. So God agreed to what we said. God agreed to what we said. We said, God, that's a horse. And God says, you're right, that's a horse. God, that's a, that's a fish. Okay, that's a fish. God, that's a seal. That's a lion. That's a tiger. Okay, that's what it is. So when, when Adam named the animals, remember, all humans came from one human. You follow me? Listen, when God gave Adam the authority to tend to the ground. He gave it to us as well because we were in Adam. You got it? When God gave Adam the authority to name the animals, we named the animals also because when Adam said a horse, he wasn't speaking for himself. Adam was speaking for all of humanity. Come on, talk to me up in here. When Adam moved 
when, that's the reason why when Adam fell, we all fell. But the last Adam came, and when he rose, we rose. See, the first Adam fell, but the last Adam rose. So we are not in a fallen state. We are now in a state where we can give names to things. We can look at stress, look at drama, and say, peace, be still. We can look at, at shortcomings and say success. We can look at bad relationships and say blessed. We can look at children who are wavered and say you are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. You got the authority that Jesus had when he was in the earth because when one Adam fell, we all fell. And when one Adam rose, we all rose. So we rose with Christ. And Christ has given us the opportunity and Christ has given us, here is a kingdom word for you. This is kingdom teaching. Christ has given us the authority. We have authority over the earth. We have a say in the matter. Nothing happens without our approval. If something is happening in the earth, it's because the saints of God are approving it. Remember, we are the government in the earth. We are. The church is the church is the most powerful agency in the earth. The church is the most powerful agency in the earth. The church is here to govern for God. When I say the church, I don't mean a building. I mean us. We are the church. The people. We are the church. Right? The church is here to govern for God. Okay? And so nothing happens without our approval. If some things are happening, it's because the church is approving it one way or the other. And so we have to really see ourselves from a different perspective or viewpoint. All right? Now, seeing ourselves from a different perspective and viewpoint, we will stop a lot of things from happening in the earth that should not happen. The reason why... A lot of things are happening is we don't see ourselves in the authority that we're in. Okay? Remember, we are the reason why the rain didn't come. Remember, we are the ones who named the animal. Don't tell me that we don't have the authority in the earth. You are an ambassador. Okay? You are Christ's representative. All right? You have the same authority that he has. You have the same power that he has. You're not lesser than God. You are in the God class. And when you see yourself that way, you will truly begin your exodus. There are things that you need to leave behind in order to walk into the blessing. There are some people that you need to leave behind in order to walk into the blessing. There are mindsets that you have to change in order to walk into the blessing. I truly believe this. God is not holding back anything from you. You are his child. He wants you to have it. He wants you to live the blessed life. When you look good, he looks good because you are Christ's representative. I want you to get that in your spirit right now. Okay, God is not holding anything back from you. He actually wants you to have it. Believe it or not, God wants you to have whatever it is you want to have and you need to have because it serves him no purpose. It serves God no purpose to hold on to what he has for you. What he has for you is a blessing. As a father, I love being able to bless my children. When I know that my children are blessed, it really makes me feel good because of the appreciation. Dad, thank you so much. It, it, it does my heart so much good to be able to be a blessing to my children. I love it. If I have a gift, a lot of times I'm fighting because I want to give it to them so badly that I have to hold myself and not give it to them prematurely. Like, let's say, right, for Christmas time. Let's say during the Christmas holiday season, you know, I, I'm buying gifts, right? I'm so excited to buy the gift because I want to give it to them because I want to see their reaction. 
I want to see the appreciation. That's my reward. When my daughters give me a hug and kiss, Dad, thank you. When my son says, thank you, Dad. When, when my wife says, thank you. Oh, my God. That's my reward. I'm not thinking about getting a gift in return. I'm thinking about putting a smile on their face. I'm thinking about how good they're going to feel. I'm thinking about, you know, their excitement. That makes me excited to give the gift, right? Now, I'm a human, right? I'm a human here. How much more does God want to bless you? How much more does God want you to look good? How much more does God want you to release? Why? Because when you get it, you give God the praise. You give God the glory. You give God the honor. And God loves it. And he gives you more and more and more. Because listen, when you look good, he looks good. See, God, God does not want people in the earth looking bad and struggling. They're not financially sound. And they're not in peace in their mind. And their health isn't good. That doesn't serve God any purpose. It doesn't. Remember, you're his child. You are carrying his name. You're carrying his name. So his name is on the line. He's not doing it for you. He's doing it for his name's sake. He's not doing it for you. It's his name. His name. God wants to protect, defend, clothe his name. So when, when, when his children walk in the authority, he looks good. When I pray for someone, or let's say you pray for someone, and that person gets healed or delivered, all the glory goes to God. God is funneling his healing through you. God is not healing someone from heaven. He's not doing that. What God is doing is God is taking your body. He's borrowing your body and putting your his hands to do, do the touching. Your mouth is his mouth to do the speaking. So God is partnering with you so that he looks good. But if you don't have the right identity, then you won't see all of these things that you're hoping for, you're wishing for, you're believing for. God is talking to me right now, so let me share this with you. This is what I want to share with you. You should ask God when it comes to your life, for his will to be done. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why you should ask the Lord for his will to be done. It's because if you don't ask God for his will to be done, then your best is God's least. I say it this way. Your ceiling is God's basement. Your, your very, very best is nothing in comparison to God's, God's very, very worst. And, and, you know, he doesn't have a worst. But what I'm trying to say is, you, you saying that this is the peak of what I see. And God is saying that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of God, uh, the heart of man, what God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Now, let me tell you, loving God, in order to truly love God as he ought to be loved, you must first have your identity straight. If you don't have your identity straight, you won't be able to love God. Because what happens is you'll be toiling, trying to get things done, and God already did it. You follow me? And so when people don't have their identity straight, they're trying to do all they can to please God. But God is already pleased with you. Somebody needs to hear that. Let me just stop right here. Let me help you with your identity. You don't have to try to please God. God is already pleased with you. You don't have to get up and toil. You get up and commune. You get up and communicate. You get up and, and, and speak and you get up and worship. That's, that's part of our DNA. But far as slaving 
to get God's approval. We, no, we don't, we don't do that. Why? Because you already have the approval of God. When God made you, he sealed you with his approval. See, that's the reason why another human can't validate you. Another human cannot. Let's stop this right now. Listen, social media cannot validate you. The car cannot validate you. The house cannot validate you. The degree, the money, the clothes, it cannot validate you. When you were born, you were born validated. God gave you his seal of approval. You have the seal of approval to God. So much so that angels wonder of your majesty. Angels are in awe of you. Angels are in awe of you. Let me go here right here. Let me show you something. Praise God. Are you guys enjoying this? I'm really trying to sow this into you. Are you guys enjoying this? Is this is this speaking to you? I want I want to read something to you. Hold on. I want to read something to you. Okay, let me read this to you. I want, I want to read Psalm 8 to you. I'm going to read Psalm 8, okay? Now, listen to this, right? I am going to read Psalm 8. Because the Spirit of God is speaking to me, so I'm just going off the cuff with this, okay? So it says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you ordain. Listen, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is man? What is man? that you are mindful of him, and the son of man, that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than yourself. Now, the Bible says angels, but that's the wrong, that's the wrong uh, interpretation. For you have made him a little lower than you, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. It's talking about you now, mankind. Listen to what it says. Mankind. Psalms chapter 8, verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than you, the Elohim, and you have crowned him with you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him, listen to me now, to have dominion over the works of your hand. Listen, Psalms chapter 8, verse 6. It says, You have made man. To have dominion over the works of your hands, you have put all things under his feet. Listen to that. Do you hear that? Listen again. Psalm chapter 8 verse 6 says, Elohim, God, you have made man to have dominion over the works of your hand. Hence, you have put all things under the feet of man, all sheep and ox, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? First of all, David is saying, who is man? David is baffled, okay? David is, David is baffled. <clears throat> David is baffled. God, David is saying, who is man that you are mindful of him? Who are we? Who are we that you give us this level of authority? Who are we that you give us this level of, of dominion? Who are we that you give us this level of empowerment? David says, 
Who are we? David was confused. David is saying, I don't understand how a mighty, holy God has given his creation the same power that he has. David is saying, who is man? That you are mindful on him. He don't understand how a mighty God has given all power to dust. To dust. Us. To people. Who is man that you are mindful of him? Don't tell me that you're not strong in this earth. David asked a question. He says, who is man? Or what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. He says, for you have made him a little lower than yourself, and you have crowned him with your glory and honor. He says, and you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have made man to have rulership, dominion. You have rulership over the works of his hand. You have rulership. You got whatever is in the hand of God, it's in your hand. Whatever is in the hand of God, based on scripture, it's in your hand. If you don't have it in your hand, it's not because it's not because God withheld it, it's because you don't know who you are. When you know who you are, you don't operate, you don't operate like you an infant. You don't operate like you outside. You don't operate, you, you operate in the maturity of, listen, whatever is in your hand, God, you have given me dominion over it. Lord, have mercy. This is not being cocky or arrogant. This is walking in your birthright. You have a birthright. Your birthright simply says, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Listen, God, now let me give you a revelation, okay? Now, it says that he put everything under your feet. Now, the Bible says that every place your feet treads upon, that has he given to you. So, your feet is representation of... Of authority. Boy. When you hear about feats or steps in the Bible. Right? The Bible says that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. So when you hear feet or steps, it simply means that you have authority. Okay? So you have authority because God took everything and put it under your feet. Okay? So you, Lord have mercy. When you, when you stand over something. That means you have the power over it. So you got the power over everything that God created and over everything that's in his hand. He took that and put it under your feet because your feet is symbolic of the authority. My God, my I I, I hope, I hope that that you're you're seeing this. I, I hope that you're sensing your fire, the fire of God. I hope that you're sensing a new identity. Listen, you can you can stop settling for less. You can you can stop. You can stop settling. You can stop settling for less. You can stop. You can. You can stop. Because less is not in the hand of God. He gave you authority over everything in his hands. He put it under your feet. So you should not settle for less. Because God has given you dominion over everything he created. So you are in the God class. You can stop settling. Stop saying yes to things you should be saying no to. Stop connecting to things and people that you should be disconnected from. You are God in the earth. You are in the God class. Your identity is not what, they, it's not what you see in the mirror. And let me say this to you. When I say identity, I'm not speaking about nothing physical. I'm speaking about morally and spiritually. Morally and spiritually, you have the exact DNA of your father. And so that means that all earth is waiting for you to show up. And when you show up, 
you get the same results. See, that's one of the secrets to my relationship with God. <clears throat> when I go to pray for someone, I never see a problem. I don't care what the issue is. I'm not healing nobody. I'm not. I don't have a power. I don't have any power to heal nobody. But I am connected to the one who does. And I know that God wants his people healed. So when I pray for someone, <clears throat> I'm not saying, oh boy, I hope that this, this blind eye open. I hope this deaf ear open. I hope this person gets healed of cancer or diabetes. Well, you guys seen it. We've been, even last week, we, we're here. We're over, we're online. And I begin to just speak the word. And you guys saw just last week, as I was speaking the word, people got healed. And I never touched them. I never touched them. What happened? I know that when I speak, and I speak in, in, in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I know that my words are not my words. They are his words. <clears throat> so if he's speaking, then, then you're healed. It's, it's, there's nothing to it. I never look and say, I hope this works. Oh my God, this is a big deal. It's never that for me. I understand that I am in the authority of Jesus. And so if I say, in the name of Jesus, headache stop. Or if I say, in the name of Jesus, pain be gone. It's a done deal. I'm not questioning it. Because see, if I, if I didn't know my authority, right? If I didn't have my identity in place, right? I would still be thinking that I'm going to make this happen. Okay? Oh my God. How is this going to work? It works because I, my identity is in Christ. See, when I see someone who is, who is sick and they need healing, I never say I'm going to heal them. See, so here's the thing. I don't take credit for it. I just rest in his identity. Okay, Lord, I, 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 read, I read your word. I trust you. I believe you. You are the healer. You heal people before. I, I, I've seen AIDS heal. I've seen, I've seen the dead raised. There's th th nothing new to me. It's not new. Some people would say, oh my God, how, how am I going to heal you? I never say that. I'm not the healer. He is. So my identity is not in me. It's not in me. My identity is in, it is in Christ. And once my identity is in Christ, he takes over. It's not me. You know, if, if I wanted to do certain things, I, I, I find it in the word. I, 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 I line up with the word and say, this is my identity based on the word. And, and I operate that way. I don't operate outside of what he shows me. You follow me? And so that's why you should operate the same way. I understand that I am made like God. David says, who is man that you are so mindful of him? David says, you have given man the authority or dominion over everything in your hand. You don't, listen, I don't need another confirmation. I don't need it. I don't need it. If, if I pray for someone, it's no different than Christ praying for them. Period, point blank. I'm solid on that. I'm sold. I don't care what it is. I'm solid that if I pray, it's no different than him praying. Period, point blank. That's it. See, I'm in it. I'm in that level of, of, of identity. And see, so the people that you see experiencing God to a higher dimension, the people that you see experiencing the most intimacy and breakthrough, it's not that God favors them. It's that they know who they are. They know who they are. Now, one of the things, well, the main thing that Satan is going to do is always tell you who you used to be. All right, let me let me just let me just hold in on that before I close out this 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 study. The biggest fight you're going to fight in your life is going to be the fight of identity. There's no fight bigger than that. In the demonic realm, that is the number one fight that demons uh, give to humanity. It was the fight that he gave to Adam and Eve. It's the fight that he does right now. That's it. So, 
what you have to do before you make a move is get the identity. Now, this is wisdom. This is wisdom. Let's say you plan to make a certain move. Okay? That move requires a certain identity in order for that move to be accomplished. If you're making a move and you don't have the identity needed for that move, then you won't accomplish what you're moving into. Because every move requires identity. Let me tell you why. Because when you're making that move, if your identity isn't solid, Satan will abort that. He'll, he'll abort the mission. He'll stop the move because he will give you reasons and excuses why it should not and cannot and will not happen. But when you have your identity right, you don't look at roadblocks. You don't look at storms. You don't look at limitation. You're not moved by it. It's no different than David and Goliath. David had, David had a plan to be king. David had a plan to be king. And he knew that he had to go through the giant to be king. So when you read, when you read 1 Samuel, uh, is it uh, chapter uh, 16 or 17? Chapter 17. David asked two or three times, what do I get? Or what, what, would, what does a person get who fights this giant? He says, okay, you, you'll marry the king's daughter, you don't pay taxes, and you get, you, you get a crown or whatever the case is. Right? What happened? David knew the way to get this done was to see himself as a giant slayer. Okay? When David saw himself as a giant slayer, then he was able to approach Goliath. He did not approach Goliath, listen to me, <clears throat> he did not approach Goliath as a shepherd, keeping sheep. He did not approach him that way. He approached him as a man of war because he knew in order for me to accomplish, I got to change how I see myself. He didn't see himself as a mere person taking care of sheep. He saw himself when he said this, the same God who empowered me to kill the lion and the bear with my hand is the same God who will empower me to kill this giant. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. The same God who gave me power to kill a lion and a bear with my hands is the same God who has empowered me to kill this giant. What did David do? Before he went to battle, he took himself and, and focus on his identity. His identity gave him the victory because he remembered when something supernatural happened that God empowered him to do. God gave David the power to kill a lion and a bear with his hand. And he said, if God did that before, he can do it now because this Philistine is uncircumcised. In other words, this thing before me is not even in covenant. So David was talking identity the whole time. He says, who, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Did you hear me? He says, listen, listen, here's, here's wisdom. David is ready to fight a giant that he has no business fighting. And what David does is he tells the giant his identity. He says, you are an, an, he said, you are an uncircumcised Philistine. When the giant heard that, what the giant heard was, I'm not in covenant. Then David says, the same God who gave me the power to kill a lion and a bear with my hand is the same God who would empower me to kill you today. Today, your body will be eaten by the birds. Today, I'm going to take your head off your body. Today, you're going to die. Before a blow was thrown, it was a battle of identities. David told the giant his identity, and then David told the giant his identity. And when the giant put the identity side by side, he recognized one thing, that he's not facing 
a regular person. He's facing a giant that's stronger than him. Jesus Christ, have mercy. Good God Almighty. You, do you see that? Do you see that? David told the giant that you're not circumcised. In other words, you're not part of the covenant. You're not in covenant with the God, the living God, Yahweh, Jehovah God, Ye Jesus, Elohim, El Shaddai. You're not in covenant with that God. You're in covenant with a false God. And when, 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 when Goliath heard David mention identity for identity, he knew then he was a dead man walking. He knew it then. Because Jewish law and custom, and even during that time, they knew what covenant was. And David said, listen, I'm circumcised. I cut my skin. I am in the power of God. But you're not circumcised. You have natural power. I'm circumcised. I have supernatural power. Man, I'm going to tell you. When you recognize this, when you get a hold of this identity thing, it'll change your life. You start to dream big. See, when your identity is straight, you start to dream big. You start to talk big. You start to move big. You don't, you, I was in the car yesterday. And I tell you, boy, I, 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 boy, I got, I got so caught up in a vision. I got so caught up in a dream yesterday that, that, that I, I couldn't even move. I couldn't even talk. My identity, yesterday the Lord took me on a, on, a, on a path, showed me a vision, and it was so big that, that I wasn't even here. I was here, but I won't here because my identity took me somewhere else. And I came inside the house, and I was talking big and, and feeling big, and, and, and all of that, was, it, it was just big. Everything, everything around me was big. It was big. Why? Because he gave me an identity. And it took me from where I am to where he wants me to be. God never moves in a person's life without first giving that person an identity, a picture. Because you must have a picture of where you're going. You don't go somewhere without a picture first. You must first capture the picture and identity for the occasion and then you move. Every, every occasion, every occasion, every occasion, every occasion. Every occasion needs an identity. You do not move into an occasion without an You have to have an identity for the thing. If you don't have an identity, you can't move in the thing. Anything you're going to do in life, you must first be impregnated with the identity, the picture to accomplish. And once you get the picture to accomplish, now you can accomplish. But you cannot accomplish independent from the picture. I pray. Boy I, boy, I feel like I worked myself on this one today. <laughs> I feel like I really worked this identity thing today. Man, I feel like I worked this thing today. I, I was try, trying my best to sow it into you, right? Trying my best to sow this thing to you. Every, every occasion, every occasion needs a picture. Every single one. You cannot move to the next place without the picture. If the picture is not there, you can't get it because the picture is needed to change your identity. I, I pray that you, you you get this today. I, 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 I mean, seriously, every, every, every occasion, listen, every occasion, every occasion, every, every occasion needs a picture. It does. You can't do it without a picture. That's it, Tanya. Every, every occasion, Everyone, everyone, every, it needs a picture. If you don't have a picture, you don't have the identity needed to accomplish. Your accomplishment is predicated on the identity that you have. If you don't see yourself worthy of it, if you don't see yourself in it, you won't never accomplish it. You have to have the identity for it. Every Listen, you should, you know what? You should, you should meditate on that. Every occasion needs an identity. I, 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 think, I think that's our takeaway right there. Thank you for that, Holy Spirit.
Our, our takeaway is every occasion needs an identity. Everyone. That's our takeaway. Write that down. Meditate on that for the rest of this week. Yep. Write that down. Meditate on that for the rest of this week. And start to get a start to get an identity for any occasion in your life. Every, see, and that's that's the powerful thing about this. Every every occasion has its personalized identity. Every occasion has its personalized identity. Listen, this is powerful. Every this this is what this is this is kingdom living. Every occasion has its personalized identity. Everyone. Everyone. So you're not going to have the same identity for everything. Everything has its separate, its unique identity. It's separate, it's unique. It's not the same for everything. Not the same. That's what makes it so awesome. Is that you, you have the identity needed for whatever it is you need to accomplish. It's already in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Praise God. Did you guys enjoy this? I, I tried my best to sow this word into you. I hope that um I hope that this I hope that I hope I did a good job. I hope that I did a good job. You know, sowing this word into you. I tried my best to just sow it. Sow it. Before I sow this thing, you know, so. Was it good? Did you guys enjoy this message? Was it good? Praise God. Praise God. So we're going to keep this going. Um, this Sunday here, we're going to uh, have our prayer team. They're going to pray for, they're going to pray. Praise God. I'm glad you guys got this. Listen, it's, listen guys. I promise you, you get this right here, it, it, it will change your life tomorrow. I mean, instantaneously, just like that. We're going to um, pray first on Sunday for a few moments, not long. And then right after prayer, we're going to have our Let There Be Light segment. Okay. Bring someone who is sick, someone who is depressed, someone who is suicidal. Bring someone on Sunday that, that, that who needs healing. I don't care what the healing is. Bring them. And we just know that God's going to heal his people. We just know that. Bring the people. Anyone sick. Bring them at 9 o'clock. We're going to pray for them and get them healed in every sense of the word. All right? And don't forget, this Saturday at 10 a.m. is our last evangelism class. No, I'm sorry. Discipleship class. Evangelism. I'm thinking something else. Discipleship class with Bishop Young. Okay? And so, let me, let's pray for, uh, I want, let me pray for you guys. So, Father, we thank you uh, for the word song. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, that we are leaving here today empowered. We're, we're leaving here with a true identity of who you are. And, 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 and also, who we are. We, we belong to you. Um, when you made us, you gave us the authority, the dominion of everything in your hands. And you put it under our feet. And so, Lord, we thank you. That you are so mindful. And that question is that, that question that David asks, what is man? Who is man that you're mindful of him? Well, it's your love. Our identity is wrapped in your agape love. Lord, we can't fail you. We can't fail you. You love us through the ups, the downs. You love us through the good, the bad. You love us through the disappointment, the letdown. Lord, your love is so, so awesome. That nothing we can do would ever separate us from your supernatural love. Oh my God. Our identity is in the value that you have in us. When David asks, who is man? What is man that you're mindful of him? It's simple. You love us to a point where it's confusing. It is the most precious, confusing thing in the world. How you can just love us with your agape love. A human mind can't comprehend it. But Father, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. That they understand the supernatural love that you have for them. 
No shortcomings, no sin, no, nothing separates us from you. And when we recognize the level of love that you have for us, then and only then will we walk in our true identity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I pray for empowerment. I pray for supernatural peace. I pray for the love of God to overtake you, to saturate you. I pray that when you go to sleep tonight, that you will feel his hands wrapped around you. I, I pray that tonight when you go to sleep, you hear the whisper in your ear. You are my child with whom I am well pleased. I love you. I will never stop loving you. Nothing that has happened in your life or nothing that will happen will stop me from loving you. Nothing can separate you from my love, daughter, from my love, son. You mean the world to me, and that's why I gave you my world when I gave you Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you want to have a rededication, or if you want to pray for family members, let's just go before God and say, Lord, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who took away the sin from the earth. Thank you for what you've done for me. You paid the price for me to be free and walk in your identity. Thank you for forgiving me. I believe you are the Son of God. You died and you rose on the third day just for me. I believe you are God in the flesh. Jesus, come into my heart. Mold my heart, God. Remove the stone and make it flesh. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for true deliverance in you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want to pray for anyone out there who is really dealing with with stress. If you are if you are really stressed over some things in your life, current or even past, if you are experiencing some difficulties in your life, if you're experiencing some things that's really messing with you and is tampering with your peace, I want to pray for you right now. Father, I want to pray for the individual or individuals who who is wrestling with your peace. Father, may the love, may the peace that's on me, which is you. Father, I pray right now, there's no distance in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, touch that person right now who's stressed, who's concerned, who's worried. Bring peace and rest to their mind. Bring peace and rest to their spirit and soul. Bring peace and rest to their household. And with the authority in me, I stop every and all demonic activity. I stop all demonic attacks. In the name of Jesus, I draw a blood circle, a bloodline around anyone who is tormented. And in the name of Jesus, it stops today. And Father, we thank you for your word is true. You said you give us sweet and sound rest. I put a stop also to voices. The voice of the enemy that keeps messing with you and lying to you. I put a stop to that now. In the name of Jesus, Satan. The blood of Jesus against you. His blood in your mouth. May you choke on the blood of Christ moving forward. If you even attempt to mess with his children and put words into their minds. Choke on his blood now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over any and all demonic activity and thought casting now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to put a stop to this right here. Listen, you have the power that God has. He ain't got no wins. If you got thoughts coming into your mind that should not be there, and you stressed, and you got concerns, you tell that thing to stop in the name of Jesus. You put a stop to that right now. I'm telling you, 
that I'm, I'm commanding the blood of Christ to go down his throat and any time a demon opened their mouth and try to give you a thought or an image, they will, they will choke on that blood. They won't be able to put a thought in your mind moving forward. They won't be able to speak a word in your mind moving forward. Under this level of knowing who you are, if they even open their mouths and come your way to say your word, they will choke on the blood of Jesus. Every single demon would choke on the blood. I command a choking in the blood right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that everyone that's on here right now, we are in our exodus, we are getting out of Egypt, and we are going to the land of milk and honey. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, anyone speaking against you will choke on the blood of Jesus. They're going to choke on that blood in the name of Jesus. I decree it, I declare it. I'm not just speaking words, I'm speaking under the authority of who I am. I am the king of kings. I am, the, I, am, I am a king of kings and Lord of lords. In other words, he's the king of kings and Lord of lords. I am a king and I am a lord because he's the king of kings. That makes me a king. Lord of lords. That makes me a lord. So he's the king. I am a king. He's the lord. I am a lord as well. Praise God. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that, listen, I want loko shambaka tasendere I want to speak a kingship anointing over you right now. I want to call out, Lord have mercy. I I'm speaking right now a kingship anointing over you right now. In the name of Jesus, you got a crown. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I, I see it in the realm of the spirit. I see this thing as clear as I can see you right now on the screen. I see in the realm of the spirit a, a golden crown with all kind of jewels over your head. It's over my head, over your head. I decree and declare that right now there is a golden crown over your head and all kind of precious stones are on there representing the kingly anointing, the kingship anointing. You are a king. And I decree in the name of Jesus that whatever the king has in the name of Jesus is over your head right now. Praise God. I see it. If I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, I'm in a vision. And in this vision, let me tell you what I see in this vision. I see a gold crown, but this is a brilliant crown. And in the crown, I see stones on every part of that crown. I mean, the crown is flooded. I'm talking about blinged out, praise God. Jesus does it big. And I'm talking, I'm telling you that this king anointing is on your life. And you're going to have to start taking authority and start acting like the king and the queen that you are. Don't play no game with this. You ain't no slouch. You are a king. You are a queen. Act like it. Fix your crown, praise God, and move forward. Because you got the authority over everything that's in the hand of God. So much so that what's in God's hands is under your feet. Lord, have mercy. I, let me say that one more time because I'm telling you, this is round two. Praise God. I thought I was gone, but I feel an anointing just fell upon me really heavy. Praise God. I got a heavy anointing on me, okay? Whatever is in the hand of God, you are so powerful that God took what's in his hand and put it under your feet. So don't tell me you're not a king or a queen. You better walk in this anointing, praise God. And you tell that thing right there. You tell that enemy. You tell that voice. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Christ against you. Choke on the blood. Goggle on the blood. You can't speak to me. The blood is in your mouth. I'm telling you that if God took that thing in his hand and put it under your feet, it's because what's in his hand is under your dominion under your authority, under your control. For one reason, you are a king, you are a queen, you are made like your daddy. Your daddy got a crown, you got a crown. Your daddy got a throne, you got a throne. Whatever your father got, you got to. In the name of Jesus, he did not leave nothing behind. You look like your father, praise God. Speak like your father. Act like your father. Move like your father. Leave Egypt behind and we're going to the land of milk and honey where the fruit is big and everything is bountiful. It's time for us to go. 
praise God, and leave this stuff behind. We ain't got time for this. We are in the Passover. The blood is on the door. The death angel has come. He's killed everything, and yet you are still alive. Your children is alive. Your business is thriving. Your marriage, your successful relationship, praise God. Everything you put your hands on, put your hands to prosper in the name of Jesus. We are in our exodus and can nothing stop us. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. Praise God. And if he spilled his blood, he gave you the victory. You don't have to fight for it. Just receive it, daughter of God. Praise God. Receive it, son of God. Praise God. Walk in the promised land. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Whoa. Glory to God. You know, I'm, I'm going to schedule a day where we break out in small groups. I'm going to find a place. I am going to schedule a day real soon where we get together and we're going to break out in small groups to do one thing. You ready? Talk big. That's it. We're going to spend one day casting vision. That's all we're going to do. We're going to come in there. We're going to pray. We're going to have a good time. But when I say break, we're going to take five people over there and five people over there. And, five, and all we're going to do is cast vision. You're going to go to that person, speak life. Then I say change. Go to a different group. Speak life. All we're going to do is speak life. That's all we're going to do. We're going to cast vision. Why? Because you're a king and a queen. And if you talk it, it will come to fruition in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you that we're going to change some things. We're going we're gonna to cast vision. That's all we're going to do. All we're going to do. Girl, I see you. I see you in that five-bedroom house. Girl, girl, I see you. I see you in that, that, in that Mercedes. My man, I see you. You driving in that business. Man, I see you with that beautiful wife and awesome family. I see you. You got mad peace on you. I see you. You glowing. We're going to just, we, we just, we just going to talk vision all day long. We're going to talk vision. It's going to be one day for, for just casting vision. It's going to be, it's going to be just amazing. A casting vision segment, session, day. We're just going to cast vision all day long. That's it. Cast vision. We're going to speak so much life that we're going to break. There's some things in your life that you have buried that God wants to resurrect. And that's the reason why I'm going to find a place. I'm going to give you a day and time. And all we're going to do is cast vision. We're going to speak. We, 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 we are going to bring back those dead things that you buried. It ain't buried, baby. We're going to bring it back to life in Jesus' name. Praise God. Got me pumped up. Anyway, praise God. Boy, I, I really enjoyed this thing right here. Man, let's, uh, Lord have mercy. Good God Almighty. Whew. There's, there's, a, there's a heavy anointing right now. I, I'm telling you, the, the anointing is heavy. Good Lord have mercy. Boy, I don't know if you can feel this thing, boy, but I'm telling you, what's over here? I don't know what you feel over there, but over here, it's heavy, Jack. Ooh, we! I'm talking about the anointing. I can feel the presence of God up in here. I'm telling you here. Ooh, my Lord, God, good cool shit, la ba go, man. Oof, Jesus Christ, have mercy, boy, man. See, la ah. See when you when you begin to talk like this, huh? He began to move. You, you feel me? Huh? There's an anointing. I'm talking about this thing is thick. Lord have mercy. It's heavy. Tanya, it's, it's, Tanya, it's heavy. I'm telling you, boy, I, man, I can feel it. Man, this is what I felt yesterday when God showed me this thing. You seen it, right? Praise God. I'm telling you. Get lost in this thing. Vision. Identity, come on, man. It's a missing ingredient to your success. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Go to sleep telling you, go to sleep 
Fall asleep tonight telling you who you are. Fall asleep. Here's instructions for you. Fall asleep tonight telling you who you are. Lord have mercy. Fall asleep tonight telling you who you are. Fall asleep tonight reaffirming and confirming your identity. Watch and see what happens. Lord have mercy. Raise your hand for the blessing. Boy, I tell you. Raise your hands for the blessing. Whew. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord mm, grant you his shalom. Jesus Christ, man. God Almighty. Whew. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Katrina and I love you all with the love of Christ. We'll see you on Sunday. Well, we'll see you on Saturday first for our discipleship class. And then we'll see you on Sunday at 9 a.m. for Let It Be Light. I believe for miracles, miracles, miracles will occur on Sunday for our Let It Be Light session. I, I, I truly believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Bring somebody who's crippled. Bring somebody who's blind. Bring somebody who's deaf. Bring somebody who's tormented. God's going to move. I, I, I feel it strongly. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you on Saturday and on Sunday. God bless you.